are here today with the support of the Elizabeth Glazer Foundation and UNICEF and everyone in this room to figure out how we push even further to bring pediatric HIV care and child survival to the same level of priority as we've given PMTCT in the last few years. We recognize that we need a fully integrated service delivery model for all services, maternal and child health, reproductive health, family planning included. We need to expand our programs to get to every child and hopefully to keep children healthy and find them as early as possible before they get sick. It is said that success has many parents, but failure is an orphan. And while all of us here should take pride in some part of the success in eliminating new HIV infections among infants by 2015, which we can see on the horizon, we also have to take our shared responsibility in a gap, a gap in that success story. This meeting is about rallying the know-how, rallying this experience, rallying this political commitment together and completing the success story, closing that gap, which is poised to be a key feature of the Millennium Development Goals Summit in 2015. Early this year, the World Health Organization launched the Consolidated Antiretroviral Treatment and Care Guidelines, marking progress in simplification and optimization of HIV treatment across populations and ages. We need to make better use of all possible entry points to identify and treat children. This includes the maternal, neonatal, and child health services, immunization sites, uh, antenatal clinics, as well as BMTCT settings. Progress in care and treatment for pregnant positive women is not matched by care and treatment for kids, newborn uh, up to uh, 15, 18 years. Uh, and unfortunately, uh, we're stuck. The clock is ticking. Uh, these are children who will die if we don't find a way to pivot off of this place that we've been at where uh, we simply are not identifying, reaching, linking children into care and service uh, at the rate that they deserve uh, and, frankly, we are capable uh, of doing. The challenge before us is not a challenge at all. Because as we've been told, we do have the answers. Now, if you have the answers, what questions are we asking? I think the question we are asking here now is what are you going to do when you get back home? What is your responsibility as a leader? So, I look at this and say, why are we here today? Governments all over the world are looking at the, the post-2015 agenda. And that is the future of humanity. If you don't position children in that agenda, it means you are not envisaging a future for us as human beings. Go back to your countries and say, where can I do it differently? Where can I do it better? How do we redefine the health system so that the health providers go to the home? As a young mother and a wife, I learned that my daughter, Lomtunzi, who looked just like me, that she was HIV positive. I was devastated to also know that my husband was also HIV positive. Both my daughter and my lovely husband were lost through AIDS. And I was so devastated that I never thought I'll make this day. Losing my child was no doubt the worst thing that any mother can experience. The one minute we were family and the one minute I was alone. Losing my lovely Nomtunzi in 1997 when there was no help, no treatment, and having that HIV positive child that cried so much 
day in and day out, and I lost her in my arms. Today, there are still many women like me, and all of them need to be tested. They need to be given treatment to make sure that they don't have the same problems that we're talking about. Taking charge doesn't mean that nobody else takes part. Governments should always lead, but with a lot of, with a lot of partnerships. The issue is let's now focus specifically now on children and look at all the entry points where we can test. For an example, the EPI programs. It's an opportunity to test. Nutrition. You know, there's a lot of malnutrition. And we know that if half of the malnourished kids is because, it's because of HIV. It's an entry point. Postnatal. They are not testing there. It's an entry point. The, the adult wards. Yeah? If you go into the hospital, the adult wards, it's an entry point. We are not testing the mothers who are admitted there. The pediatric wards, it's an entry point. So let's, let's, let's be like a blotting paper. L let's look at all those areas so that we've got opportunities that we're missing so far to test our children so that we have early diagnosis and put them on treatment early. In as much as we have a very high percentage of antenatal uh, antenatal uh, attendance where our women are tested. Most of our women, almost all our women are tested and then they do not come back to deliver in the hospitals. So we are losing out most of the, even after that we have put all the frameworks uh, in place. We are losing those uh, children and the women. Health centers will open up more uh, entry points to recapture those uh, children and the mothers through uh, literacy programs under community development and women empowerment programs. As we know, Swaziland, we, we, um, we've got our, even our cultural practices, some of them of which we, we, we see our men not much involved in the pregnancy, in the caring of a child. So we, we've made sure that we, we promoted community dialogues whereby we, we, we involve our, our, our men in, in all programs. Not only we target women only, but because they are partners and they are playing a great role in as far as uh, prevention and treatment of children is concerned. We launched the primary health care revitalization. Why? Because we thought that it was not just HIV and AIDS and TB only being affected, but all the health services in the country were down. If you consider the, the topography of uh, our, our, our country and the hard to reach, it's difficult to access the, the health center. So the integrated services is, is very good to us. Uh, PMTCT into our MNCH. Uh, about 97% uh, of MNCH centers are performing PMTCT. And we believe with that, we can very much bring all the other HIV services into MNCH services. But also, um, we are trying to increase to, to, to scale up um, identification, early infant diagnosis. And how do we do that? First of all, we need to increase the number of machines. But secondly, we need to strengthen provider-initiated HIV testing and counseling. And by that, uh, we will use all the entry points, OPD, um, wards, uh, TB clinics, and even uh, EPI programs in order to bring more, pay, more, more, more kids to be identified. And also, we are trying to uh, improve the initiation of HIV, HIV positive eligible children on ART 
Now, how are we going to do that if we are understaffed? The only way which we have already <coughs> started discussion on is the fact that we are going to do task sharing. We need to do that, and I think it is achievable. Um, uh, training will be undertaken and mentoring in those primary health care centers. And particularly, um, we, we are looking forward to make sure that uh, nurses and others can now be used to diagnose, but also to start AR, AR, ART. Finally, the question of retention of those who are already on treatment. And this can only be done through uh, strengthening of uh, support groups, particularly at community level. And that is what we are doing. So to conclude, I would say that um, after this meeting, what are we going to do? What we, definitely we are going to do things differently as we are being asked here. We will do things differently. We'll make sure that these plans are put into action, implemented, but for sure the government can do, cannot do all these on its own. That's why I want to use this opportunity to ask all the stakeholders, um, including um, UN agencies for technical assistance, but also development partners for financial assistance uh, community um, um, uh, participation is very important in this, civil society, and everybody. If everybody is, is on board, I'm sure after some time, we will have different statistics from what we are having today. Thank you very much. Indeed, we've been selfish. We can't test uh, el uh, I mean, older people within five, ten minutes. We're able to tell them you're HIV positive or not. Why can't we get that same service for the children because we are here sitting getting machinery that is so expensive he's talking of four machinery i'm talking about one and i'm talking of somebody driving with blood samples from one end of a country to this particular facility in the process some of it is lost and therefore that child is never going to be treated so why can't we get the scientists to come up with the same that they've managed to get for the elderly because i'm sure it is possible in my country, he talked of 50% availability. I'm talking of about 30%, and that is real. What happens is this healthcare worker is alone. She has to look after this pregnant mother. She has to look after so many other, and for her priority is to give out drugs as quickly as she can. She doesn't have time to actually do the other tests because the child that is going to come HIV positive will probably have malaria, probably already has pneumonia and definitely needs all those to be tested. Will this healthcare worker who's already burdened, are they going to spare that time to do all these tests on this very vulnerable child? All these are issues that I think are very critical for us to look at if we indeed were going to increase coverage for our under five, I mean for our, our infants because we really need to, to make sure that we do that if our, we want to have a generation that is HIV um, uh, free. <laughs> It is possible for us to actually have a lot of good success story. It's just a matter of us putting all the jigsaw puzzles where they are. We do have the pieces. It's just a matter of us knowing which piece goes where. We talk about testing, but you know that most of our people in our countries believe so much in the leaders. And once they see a leader doing something, they will definitely follow suit. His Excellency, the President of Uganda, in order to encourage people to test for HIV AIDS, publicly took an HIV test recently. And of course, when he did this, then everybody has followed suit. The members of parliament, the ministers, and everybody's doing it. So we believe that once we cannot succeed in the fight against HIV AIDS without knowing our status. So it's important for people to be tested, and definitely leaders have to be role models in this drive. I'm convinced having listened to the evidence and the stories um, and with the people in this room that we can do this. I want to thank the people in this room on the behalf of the Global Fund for helping us have a successful replenishment. So I don't think we would have raised so much money without the, the real service and delivery of the ministers, ministers of Health and the people in this room uh, that sh showing that the progress we've made to date. So we've made a lot of progress in a lot of areas. 
we've got a lot to do, but it's a, it's a confidence um, that everybody in this room has given the global community uh, to continue for the next three years. So I'd like to thank everybody on that. In addition to PEPFAR working with U.S. government-supported maternal child health care programs, we're looking at ways to better integrate PEPFAR's supported programs of OVC, PMTCT, and pediatric treatment and care. To that end today, we are announcing a new initiative that's focused on developing integrated intervention packages for young children zero to five. This initiative will develop and rigorously evaluate specific interventions to enhance our practical understanding of how community platforms and clinical platforms are mutually reinforcing. This initiative will provide $12 million for operational research, such as how do we use existing platforms to promote early childhood development, nutritional support, family strengthening, including economic strengthening, while at the same time supporting interventions for identification and retention of HIV-positive children and caregivers. The aim of this intervention is, or initiative is to accelerate the implementation of integrated interventions that demonstrate the greatest impact on child and family well-being. And I would like to close with a quote from the late Nelson Mandela that continues to inspire me. It always seems impossible until it is done. Thank you. Honorable ministers, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen. Allow me to first of all convey our appreciation to the government of South, South Africa for hosting this event and indeed for the excellent hospitality accorded to us since our arrival. On your behalf, I would like to convey to the government and people of South Africa our deepest condolences for the passing away of President Neslon Mandela. We pray to the Almighty to rest his soul in eternal peace. We know that protecting the health of their HIV positive mothers is fundamental to that effort. Aligning our broader efforts to strengthen maternal and child health, especially at primary level of care, will be crucial to accelerating results. This means doing things differently, working beyond antenatal services, connecting to routine immunization and nutrition programs, community and facility-based child health services. We agree that the action framework presented and discussed today, the double dividend makes sense. In principle, we consider it endorsed. We go back to our countries with renewed enthusiasm for and increased commitment to greater alignment of our HIV and maternal and child health programs. And finally, we count on our partners to support us in this effort. With these few remarks, I wish all of us fruitful implementation of our renewed promise to child survival. 